It's fish are f***ing dumb. I'm Whoa. sorry. Fish are, fish are a very unintelligent Whoa. animals. You would be the ideal candidate for this humane meat. Would it be cruel for me to take your life from you for a sandwich? Meat is halal. Being vegan is just a mental thing. I think this guy's crazy. Well, oh, you have this mental ideology to push veganism amongst people. You have a contradiction. That's a, no, that's a very good. That's actually a very good argument. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's a very intelligent argument. I'm actually surprised. Um... Hi, my name is Joey Carbstrong. I'm a vegan who has spent the last seven years trying to convince people that animal cruelty is wrong without as much success as I hoped. So I thought I'd try a new, completely opposite approach. I'd pretend to support animal cruelty and harness the power of reverse psychology. And you're deleting your brain for What? Okay. This is how it went. Come again? What do you think of the sign? Uh, well, I actually have two questions for you first. First, I want to, I think definitions are important. What do you think animal cruelty is? Let's just use an example like, say chickens. Right. Uh, I think chickens are pretty sentient like they're like birds or whatever they got pain receptors in the brain and that you know they got a spinal cord connected to the brain and nerve endings and things like this and they experience the world I would say taking a chicken putting them in a factory farm making them grow really fast and then putting them in a slaughterhouse and eating them I would call that cruelty I don't think I honestly don't think that I don't think there's anything wrong with it and most people here don't think there's anything wrong with it either because they will pay for it so. well you know that's interesting that you say that because I, I know while I was waiting to uh, talk with you, your cameraman over there has a vegan tattoo. I know. And you got a you got a tattoo on your ear that says uh, me Megan, yeah. but the the M is with Sharpie, so I think it says vegan. So mate, uh, mate, I think what you're, you're doing too is smart for your own good, buddy. What, are, what can I say? I'm very I'm a very uh, observant individual. Are you a meat eater? Yes, I am. And what did you first think when you saw the sign? I thought it was a abhorrent uh, message, certainly. Yeah. When you, like, you know the example I gave you of animal cruelty, right? Yeah. That example is one that most people here in London and the world, right? most of the world, support. <laughs> so they must, they either think it's wrong and they support it with their dollar, or uh, they're, they're just acting in discord with their beliefs. Yeah, I think it's, it might be the latter. I'd say it is a bit hypocritical. I, when I, I'm, uh, I'm a migrant worker, and I, I come from Seattle okay. originally. There's a chain called the PCC, which is uh, all local, like, if cruelty is inflicting unnecessary suffering to an animal, cruelty-free uh, meats, and I, I like, it's, it's much harder to maintain that uh, at London, I, but um, I, when I am in Seattle, I, I try to eat cruelty-free when I can. Let me ask you this. You're free-ranging. You look, you look pretty cheery. Yep. I mean, I don't want to make assumptions, but you seem like you're in good well-being. Of course. You would be the ideal candidate for this humane meat that is fair so can I ask you would it be cruel for me to just kill you right now to eat you if you did it with like a morphine shot in a way that would be plain painless uh, I, I think if I did not have a concept of life and death certainly but just you right now I'm just saying like would it be cruel for me to take your life from you for a sandwich <laughs> I think that that would be cruel, but how? I, I do also think. Sorry, let me let me <laughs> okay, uh, figure I'll out how to phrase you this. Your it is it is a hard uh, because you know you, you've already exposed a bit of a double standard there. There is a definite double standard. I, I certainly think that with uh, I, I don't support factory farming at all. I think. Uh, well, you do. Well, you do. I you do, don't I in do. your belief, but you do in your actions. That is fair. That is fair. I, I think society doesn't really. It's very hard unless you're kind of well established in an area where you can get local cruelty-free meats to uh, Okay, but we just support. established you wouldn't be cruelty-free if I killed you for a sandwich, so why, well, why is it okay for a cow? Because they don't have a concept of life and death. If you okay. kill them painlessly, they don't know that they're going to die. They don't know that they're living. They they just know pain. They know hunger. They they don't have more complex uh, systems like that. Yeah, but not all humans can. 
that. So that's so are you opening the door point. for human meat, are you? <laughs> and the caveat is if you don't understand com complex systems. Well, humans have a much higher under their our brains are much more advanced than let's say a cow's. And while it, I think it's cert there's some animals where it's much where I, you shouldn't kill them because they also have a higher understanding. Elephants, even pigs. I think there's a, a definite argument for the okay. pigs. So you're saying that if you are more intelligent, you shouldn't kill them based on intelligence? Yes, and if they're less intelligent, you shouldn't kill them in a way that's painful and going to cause okay. unnecessary suffering. So only suffering. kill the dumb animals? Yes. And the smart animals, let them live? It's a bit of a straw man, but uh, yeah. Well, well, okay, I don't want to misrepresent your position. I mean, well, it's not I just a, said it in a more blunt, simplistic way. Indeed, indeed, but it, it is a bit more nuanced than it's that. It's okay to it? kill dumb animals. Again, that is a bit of a straw man because that's a more blunt way to put it, a more simplistic way to put it. Well, they don't a have a, so so. If there were human beings, yes, let's create a hypothetical, right? That had the same um, thought process as a cow. I think you you're sort of underwriting the complexity of a cow. Um, you don't know much about cow intelligence, maybe. But even if you didn't, that's a bit of an ad hominem. But no, because you said pigs, right? Right. But I don't care. Cows and pigs aren't too dissimilar. They are completely separate. They're they're not even in, in, they're in not, their intellect. They're the only thing they share about them is that they're mammals. They're very very so, they're two so, separate so, uh, well, types. Well, I don't of, think a cow and a dog are dissimilar in the way they learn or intelligence. They are pretty dissimilar. In what way? Their neurologies are completely different. Yeah, but I mean, like in the way that they learn. Like a cow can learn their name. They can they they get happy and excited. Can learn to sit. Can learn to. Um, Turn on taps, can open doors. Yeah, but it's it's a like what level of intelligence do you need to be smarter than a dog? Well, a smart that's dog? like that's that's for instance equating like let's say a TI eighty four and a uh, I don't know an iPhone. They both can so do very second, similar things. So a dog's here. You wouldn't say killing a dog is okay because of their intelligence level. I, so let's just say a cow is here. Boom, it's okay to kill them. I, I think that there's a bit more of a separation. So let's just say there. this is the graph. Right. Dogs are here. Where are cows? Oh. And where's your line? to kill. What? There's no unit. You're not providing units with your hands. Well, I, I mean, that's the only way I can visualize. That's At fair. At what point can we kill an animal in your subjective... A cow's got to be the threshold. You don't eat... You must not eat pigs. Uh, no. I, I don't eat pigs. Thought about it for a sec. At all? I have eaten pigs in the past before, but... You have a rule not to eat pigs at all? No. And that's because they're smart? And I'm Jewish. And you're Jewish. <laughs> okay. That's a pretty good reason. <laughs> that's a pretty good reason. Okay. Okay. No worries. So it's not because they're smart. Well, it, it, I so think it's it both. If it wasn't for religious reasons, you you would... No, because I, I think there is... I think kosher laws are based off of humane okay. killing. Like the whole point of kosher slaughter is to kill an animal in the pain like before we had let's say anesthetic and morphine and all that stuff to kill them in the most painless manner yeah it's similar to halal slaughter in a way kosher slaughter and halal very similar sharp knife I've seen it have you witnessed it I've seen videos of cows being killed kosher yep what did you think I thought that it's better than the alternative of factory farming. Well, factory farms are not slaughterhouses. Slaughterhouses, factory farms, and any cr animal cruelty, so, as so, you said. Yeah, yeah. So, but, so basically, what, what are, we're getting off the topic here. Right. We get, we've gone to slaughter, right? But we were debating intelligence for a second there. So do you think... Obviously, like we, we can debate a practical point on how intelligent a cow is. Right. I don't. I think you're going to have to look into that yourself because I think we're just going to go back and forth. Right. Because you say they're not not smart. I say they are. And uh, I don't know how much less smart than a dog you'll have to be to not kill them in your eyes because you don't have a you don't have a like a metric. You're just saying they're a cow. They're probably dumber. It's okay to kill them. Well, there's there's less conclusive evidence that cows mourn, and there's a lot of conclusive evidence that dogs mourn. There's no conclusive evidence. No, 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 no. I did not say no conclusive evidence. Said less. There is some evidence. Uh, animal neurology is a very, very hard topic. It's because we can't c talk with animals in plain English. It's, it's a, tr it is a very tricky topic. I so will admit cows that. are maternal animals, yeah? yeah. Maternal. They're maternal. They have a nine-month pregnancy like humans do. 
And I believe you, so. And you, you don't think that they feel anything when you take their car from them? I think that's more of a motherly thing than a uh, uh, loss thing. Because um, when in most animals, from the hyper-intelligent to the, like, the fish. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was... The, fish the, are not smart? The, the fish are f***ing dumb. I'm Whoa. sorry. Fish are, fish are a very unintelligent oh, animal. Oh, 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 you're getting into... Um, I would say that you there's a lot you don't know about fish. What don't I know about fish? They actually beat... Uh, was it, uh, what, what type of animal? Chimpanzees? Chimpanzees and a, and a scientist's four-year-old daughter in the coloured plate experiment. It's called the coloured plate experiment. The animals, uh, I think, whatever primates they were, uh, they had to learn to eat off of one coloured plate first and both coloured plates would stay. So if they ate off the red plate, both plates would stay. If they ate off the blue plate, they would lose a plate of food. All right? I think it was like a hundred, a hundred tries. But the fish, they beat the primates and they beat the, they beat the four-year-old, um, the scientist's four-year-old daughter at this color plate experiment. Well, an octopus. You know how smart they are. Well, I, I the, the octopus and fish are completely separate. Uh, okay. Animals. You mean like the the fish that swim, the vertebrate? Tuna. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, anyway. In terms of the color plate argument. Uh, I, I'm assuming you're being truthful. I, I, I don't think you'd lie. Uh, I, I haven't read this study, but based off of what you are saying here, um, I don't know how conclusive, like, how from conclusive a, it's that from might be. It's from the book be. What a Fish Knows, and there's a bunch of research in that book, What a right. Fish Knows. Oh, well, I, I think I will have to educate myself on that a bit more. But, uh, but, but, but what, either, either, either. My, my argument is not contingent on this intelligence thing. So I right. think it's a, a very bad argument. Right. I don't think someone's right should be contingent on how smart they are. I think uh, it should be on your capacity to experience the world and to suffer and to, um, you know, ex basically experience. That's what that, that's what gives you rights. Because you, if you're smarter than me, you very you sound pretty smart. You shouldn't have more Thank rights you. than me. Well, should you? Do you think? That's, a, that, that's an interesting argument. I think it might be slightly tiptoeing into a straw man argument, but I do think it's a very interesting thought experiment. Because uh, there's a bell curve of, of intelligence exactly. with humans. Some are smart, some are not. You know, that is some true. Some are born with a uh, disability. Children, um, they grow to be smarter, but at a, as a baby, they're no less smart than a baby chick. Like a baby chicken. Baby chickens are smarter in some ways than a six-month-old human. What Did metric? You know they can recognize their sibling upon hatching, and uh, also they know when something has disappeared. Object uh, permanence. Object permanence. Right. But uh, babies think that it's gone, and they peekaboo sort of stuff. Peekaboo, yeah. Well, without further information, I can't really draw any conclusive... You're an evidence-based person. I am a very evidence-based person. But my principal point doesn't right. need any of this research. And what do you th what do you think about the principal point? The principal point of the fact that... Uh, that intelligence should shouldn't dictate the way someone is treated. I certainly think that, it, like, with everything, there is nuance. And yeah. um, okay. it's much harder to argue, like, dog versus human or pig versus human than it is human versus bug or fish. I, I, I understand where, where things, lines tend to get grey, but you were debating with me about a cow. Right. A cow is a very far away from certain insects. Certainly. And they're a lot closer to us. I can say that cows are definitely like <laughs> on the line, you know? Uh, on, the on your line? On my line. So your line is like just above cows. <laughs> Certainly, and I mean, I mean if, God. if... If... <laughs> so I mean, but I think that line's a much more strict standard than what how, most people have. Don't you think? How do you, you rectify the um, argument for marginal cases then? Because... Marginal, like cows. There are ma marginal case human beings... Right, oh. ...who have... The, the, a capacity less than a cow, okay, and they, right. they they do exist. If you don't believe they they do definitely exist, but if you don't if you don't believe they do, create the hypothetical human, put them just below a cow in your metric. Is it okay to kill that human? From a Kevorkian standpoint, uh, for a burger, for a burger, that, the same reason we kill cows. 
That, that's pretty funny. Kosher. Certainly. Kosher slaughter too. Well, I'm just going to say painless slaughter. First, I want to approach it without the, the burger. Um, well, that's the only reason we kill cows. That is, that, well, generally. Ge well, there's medical research as well. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I think, small percentage. I think um, it is... I think it would. It is okay to put them down. That happens a lot in the medical field. Doc Sigmund Freud was put down. Um, uh, um, you mean you mean euthanizing? Yeah, Kevorkian. Like with well, well, I don't know if Kevorkian is. Uh, you mean it's like a? It's like a mercy a, killing. Mer yes. Oh, yes. Well, you know, we're not talking about mercy killing, man. We're talking about killing them against their will for a needless. Uh, well, uh, it, product. if they're at the point where they're cow. Uh, I support killing mercy killing. That is mercy killing if they're at like that low of a level, if they can't function, if they're just like in misery in a wheelchair, strapped no, no, up no, to no, tubes. No, 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 I'm not talking about suffering. I'm talking about mental capacity. I never said that they're, we, we're wanting to kill them because they're suffering in this state. They're just in the, I'm trying to create this hypothetical being that is human, that um, has less complexity of thought than a cow, because that was your metric. Right. Just to see if you're consistent and I'm not talking about uh, mercy killing or euthanasia because they're in pain I'm just talking about they're just existing in pretty good well-being and we go up we round them all up and kill them for the same reason we kill cows is that justified in your opinion well there I know that in the medical field there have been mercy killings of such individuals at a and if they are happy like the, the mercy killings I'm referring to have been like people who kind of just are in wheelchairs slobbering all over themselves not being able to kind of pr process um, like but if, if they cows are, happy, are not like that no, I, I know yeah. I know so that's what I'm saying the, their yeah. capacity of a cow so they can feel they happiness play, they feel, they, of course cows can feel, they can feel happiness suffering well, cows can feel all, a whole range of emotions that they care for their young you see them dancing out in the grass when they right. get in the barns you know well in that case I'm going to have to say no uh, that, that wouldn't be okay Okay. I'd have to say no. Um, okay, okay. So it's not okay for the. That's a good argument, by the way. Because uh, you're a logical man, I right. wanted to it, bring it down to logic. Because you are being, you have a contradiction. That's a, no, that's a very good. That's actually a very good argument. <laughs> You're, that's that's a very intelligent argument. I'm actually surprised. Um, I mean, no, sorry, that sounded insulting. That's Wasn't okay. trying to no, insult cool. you. Like, I'm cool. no, that that was just like. Don't a, take my rights away and eat me. That was a bomb. That was that was certainly a bomb. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I you might bomb this uh, approach on it too, but uh, from a food chain perspective. Uh, Human, like it's it's the way of life. Humans have eaten cows. It, it's we are omnivorous creatures. Okay, so what is it? So we want to stay. So you said humans have eaten. Are you going to appeal to history or tradition? Not no, not tradition. Um, well, nature. Are you going to appeal to nature? I'm appealing to nature. I want to see how you approach you, this. I, I don't care what happens in nature. I care what's ethical and what we ought to do in civilization as it is now. Right. I, I don't look to nature to dictate my morality to dictate my health care. I don't look to nature and go, hey, you know what? There's no medicine in nature. I'm not going to have medicine. Hey, I look, a lion's mating with that lioness without consent. I mean, it's not, it's in like, you know, these things, it doesn't matter to me what happens in nature or what we've done huh. historically or traditionally. These are all just um, logical fallacies. <laughs> That's actually that, that's a pretty good argument. It wouldn't I, matter if we think. were omnivores either. Like it wouldn't matter if you believe we were natural omnivores. But we are. Well, if you believe that, that's. I mean. I don't believe that. That's fact. Yeah. Like, I mean, I would, would, I, would I call us omnivores? Would I call us opportunistic scavengers? I mean, because we're not built like an omnivore with claws and with. Uh, Teeth. We, have, we don't hunt down our prey. We don't have omnivorous instincts either. Well, but, um, vultures are still uh, carnivorous, and they vultures. are scavengers. Yeah, they are mostly scavengers. Yeah, but they're the carnivorous. Yeah, they, that eat just rotten, means... they eat rotten flesh. Like we don't behave like omnivores, is what I mean. The only thing right. we do is we eat dead flesh, but we sanitize it so there's no bacteria. We don't act like natural omnivores. So we're 
closer to like um, fake omnivores, wannabe omnivores. Scavengers. Scavengers. Necrovore, maybe. But scavengers and necrovores Necrovore, we eat dead exist flesh. It's already dead. in nature. Yeah. And uh, primates yeah. do other primates, our closest uh, relatives. And, 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 and to me, whatever you believe right. we, we are, or whatever scientifically we are, it doesn't matter. What matters to me is what is ethical to do. Right. And what we ought to do, and I don't think it's, uh, it's not, obviously not bad for our health to not eat meat. You know? Well, it's not ideal, but it, it won't kill you. I mean, I, I'd say that eating meat probably might. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of, I'm sorry, this is a logical fallacy. I'm going to do a bit of an appeal to authority. My father is uh, one of the top gastroenterologist nutritionists in the uh, country, and it's, it's a very interesting argument. And not this country, America. Just before you go on, I'll let you go on. Right. Do you think it's required for us to be uh, of general well-being, health-wise, uh, to e eat animals? Well, it's, it is, it is as you're saying, with modern technology. Meat is halal. Being vegan is just a mental thing. This guy's crazy. It's, it's, a, it's already halal. But vegan is halal. No, no. Animals are put on this earth to be fed. You can't eat certain animals because of, of certain things, but, but animals are there to be ate. But vegan is halal as well. Yeah, you, Being vegan is halal as well. Yeah, yes, because because in Islam you can have a half vegan lifestyle and also eat meat, but not every day of every day, every day of the week. As, yeah. as, as, as a human body, as a human, your body is able to consume these things. But you have this mental ideology to push veganism amongst people, and you're, you're deluding your brain. Well, boy, see, this is in the show. This is the UK. Have a good day. Have a good day, my brother. Take care. Bless you. Okay. <laughs> wow, I can't finish my logical fallacy. Here, Being guys. vegan Jeez. is also halal <laughs> as long as you don't drink alcohol. But anyway. Yes. Yeah, 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 you're dead. Well, yeah. I, I, for instance, it, it's not like people obviously can live as vegan, right? Obviously, we don't have a dead bunch of dead vegans uh, proving otherwise. But it is, from a health perspective, ideal to eat meat. And I mean, with modern what technology. Do you, mean, what do you mean ideal? With modern technology, we can get nutrients that are in meat that uh, we need, such as, I'm going to just use an example, but not as bioavailable. For instance, coenzyme Q10, it's very necessary in uh, our body's antioxidation uh, cycles. Uh, and I've never heard of that, by the way. Coenzyme Q10. With the Academy of Nutrition Dietetics in America, the largest uh, group of nutrition professionals on earth, of doctors and nutritionists, I think it's about 50,000. Would they know about it? Coenzyme Q10, yes. So why haven't they, why have they brought out a big peer-reviewed position statement saying that vegan diets can be healthy for all stages of the life cycle? Why have they done that? Infancy, pregnancy, adulthood, elderly, athletes? Because, again, with modern advances in technology, we can get stuff that is only, like, nutrients that we usually get from meat in nature, yeah. but, again, it's not as bioavailable, so it's harder to maintain a vegan diet. They didn't mention this enzyme in the, coenzyme, in the position statement. The coenzyme Q10 is it's a very, 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 like, my, my father uses it to treat patients all the time. It's a very, very, very critical okay. of, but and he might do you think instance, they made a mistake then in their position paper? It is feasible and to it's, it's harder to maintain a vegan diet, but it is feasible to do so. I'm not saying that you're going to die if you are vegan. That would be a stupid position. If you found out you could be uh, healthy as a vegan, do you think it would be the, the thing we ought to do morally? Well, I, to be fair, I think in 10 years we won't have to have this conversation. In, uh, they're with lab-grown meat, advances in lab-grown okay. meat. It's becoming more feasible to have commercial commercial uh, lab-grown meat. So in 10 years, we won't even need to have this conversation, luckily, because again, you know, you do bring up a very interesting ethical dilemma. But, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a moot point in 10 years. I, I appreciate what you're saying, right. but I didn't appreciate an answer to... Right, okay, so ask me the question Should again, I'm we sorry. be vegan from a moral perspective if you found out that you could be healthy? So is it the thing we ought to do morally? Uh, again, I think it, it really depends on the animal and how you kill them. Because obviously factory farms and slaughterhouses don't do it in the most humane way. They do it in a very cruel and unusual way, I'd say. Local farmers, kosher slaughter, uh, people, rabbis that do, do the kosher slaughter, they do it in a pretty humane, painless way. I've, I've witnessed kosher slaughter. Right. 
one of the most sickening types of slaughter I've seen, actually. Really? I've witnessed, yeah. Well, from a medical perspective, it is from the animal's perspective. You know, the RSPCA here in the UK, who I don't actually agree with as an organisation, just generally. What is that? The RSPCA, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. I think I've heard of them. Yeah. Well, they actually don't allow non-stun hal- uh, halal slaughter because it takes a minute for the animal to die. It's a minute of suffering. So I'd call... I would they're not equivalents, though. They're almost identical. No, that's actually a very common misconception. So what is different about kosher? I, I don't know enough about halal slaughter, to be honest, to give you well, the uh, deets. Well, halal but, uh, uh, is uh, a super sharp knife, and they cut really quickly through a bunch of nerves, and they expect that the animals stop receiving a message to the brain but that's actually not the case so it's basically just slashing a, a lamb or a cow's throat open without uh, any stunning that it, they, they just slash them with a sharp knife I think across the throat either way I still think painlessly taking someone's life from them is not right and I think you agreed when we try equalize the human to a cow obviously cow like there there is a lot to debate on cow terms but like I'm assuming you also don't eat fish and the, the color plate, like, I, I, I can't really t- say anything about that chick thing you brought up earlier. Like, I just don't think it's justified. The person. color plate argument, like, that's not as, that as, that, that means nothing to me in terms of intelligence because color perception and intelligence are not inherently correlated. And Well, uh, I, I don't care about intelligence when it comes to moral yes. discussions, and we already tackled that. A, like, I thought it was a, um, it's kind of right. beside my point. My that is beside your point. So, like, a fish is still sentient. And so pain and suffering. In ten years, this will be a moot point. Like, why does it matter now? I, I want to get your opinion I don't on that. Wait, I don't want to wait ten years. You don't want to wait ten years. I think right now we have the power. The only reason, like lab-grown meat and all this is becoming things, is because people are taking action. People are taking action and going, okay, we've got to make meat obsolete. We have to do the, like there's people out there advocating this different forms of activism, all helping pick culture change. And I want to be one of those people that didn't wait for. I want to be on the right side of history and not go, oh, wait, like, I waited for culture to change before I acted morally? What what was I doing back then? Like, there's a reason you don't go around kicking dogs dogs and stomping on people's children and shooting people. There's a reason, because you're like, oh, I don't want to act him. I wouldn't want it done to me. I consider... You have your own moral system. Yeah. I I suggest you contradict it a bit. I don't think I just contradicted. I think that, again, you, the, you've, I think we've both laid out that there is certainly a double standard in society. But I think it's a much more nuanced, uh, sorry, nuanced topic. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very nuanced topic. There's, a, like, obviously, like, an interesting, like, tr- tr- line drawing aspect. There's the health aspect. Certain point where the line becomes grey. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it definitely ain't at cows. It definitely ain't our cows. That's, that's, that. Well, in terms of factory farming, because yes. When we tra- well, and we try equalize the human, you wouldn't even want to kill them, even if we killed them painlessly. Because for a burger, that was for sure. You said for mercy killing, okay. Well, but for a burger, no. If they're I, happy, I think from a very weird ethical standpoint, I personally would never eat a human burger. But if they like, it's like organ donors. If you have a cannibal and there's a human that's already dead that you didn't kill just for the meat, then you should provide the cannibal with the dead human. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with roadkill, people eating roadkill. Yeah. The only problem I would see is that they would um, see meat as a product and it would... Slippery slope. Yeah. So, but, but generally, if there's a dead bird there and someone wants to eat it, I don't protest it. It's If they kill the bird against the bird's will and then eat the bird, then I have a problem with it because there's other things to eat. Unless they're in a survival situation... You're not. Right. I'm not. So then, would you also agree that if a human's already dead, like roadkill, for instance, or a human roadkill, it would be okay to eat it? I personally wouldn't eat a, a road, a dead animal <laughs> or either. a dead human. I don't see animals as food or humans as food. I see us right. as, I th- I'd, like, if I seen a dead pigeon, I would put them in the ground. I'd feel very sad about it. Um, if I see a dead human, I would respect their body. I would not. I don't see dead animals or dead people like that. It's just, I don't look at it like that anymore. Well, 
Yeah. I've changed the way I completely view animals. Like, I don't see a dead chicken as food anymore. I'm sure if there was a dead chicken here with feathers on, you probably would go, ugh. An omnivore would start licking their, their blood and like start che chewing into the... I don't know. I mean, it, it depends on how rotten it is. Like, I mean, we eat dead animals, you know? When you boil it down to the gritty, it's gross, but that's just how it is. That's how nature is. And I mean, that is an appeal to nature, but... I don't care about nature, bro. Again, I know you do not. And I mean, I... I there's, good, there's good things in nature, but there's also horrible, vile, disturbing, exactly. disgusting things in nature, which is why you can't point to it and say, this is ethical because of nature, or this is healthy because of nature, or... You know? No, exactly. But my point was that, uh, you know, a human probably millennia ago, if they saw a not moldy chicken on the yeah. ground, they probably would have licked their lips. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, we have society Starving now. And, back, you know, yeah, just exactly. surviving, doing what they can. They probably eat each other back then a bit here and there, you know what I mean? Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So I, I get your, I definitely see your point about like society evolving. Yeah. I think it's certainly a, a very, very solid point. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's certainly a good intellectual topic to chew on, but in the 10 years that it's going to take for, well, that's just an estimate, obviously, like a number I'm throwing out of my ass, but in the 10 years it's going to take to, uh, like, get lab-grown meat for health reasons, for, like, you know, well, mostly for health reasons. Obviously, there's the greedy reason of it tastes good, which, uh, you know, would be a bit dumb for me to argue, but... Uh, People I, do. You'd be surprised. That's one, one, the number one, one of the number one. Um, things I get they taste good they taste them but, and uh, this is just uh, some practical help right uh, you probably have the uh, you know well utilities to be able to look this up, stuff up yourself but if you're interested and you don't think it's justified to do what we do um, you well know. I will certainly I will certainly read some of your th thought ideas I will take them uh, I will think about them critically um, and you know, I always like listening to different paradigms. Oh, you have a, you have a security detail behind you. Do you want to debate him? Okay, well, uh, good talking to you, man. It was great talking with you, and I like you. You really made me think today. I really, I never like in America. I live in Seattle. I never get intellectual conversation. Never, never, never. It's impossible to find it. I'm getting <laughs> up if you want to like talk with him. Okay, or not. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I, I won't hog. Uh, like it Cheers, was a brother. pleasure was to, to talk you. with you. Thank you and, so much. Uh, uh, I, I won't hog you anymore. Thanks, I'll let mate. someone else have Take that care. toy.